a certain lack of clarity remained over what exactly had been negotiated and resolved or not resolved or what the final positions of a Barak had been at Camp David. As I said, because he offered no maps and nothing real in writing or in specifics, um, um, certainly not made public. Uh, and therefore, in some way, one can say, OK, we don't really know what was offered by Israel at Camp David. What we do know exactly is what President Clinton subsequently offered the Palestinians in his famous proposals of the 23rd of December 2000. In other words, five, six months after Camp David, President Clinton decided, OK, I'm going to break the logjam, or try to break the logjam, and put on paper publicly my offers or my proposals for a final status solution to the Israel-Palestine problem. And these were published on the internet, the proposals, very detailed proposals. And these, one can't argue, I mean, the Palestinians can say, OK, what the, whatever they want about what Barak offered or didn't offer them, they can't say this about what Clinton offered, because it was all very public. Um, um, Clinton, in the proposals of the 23rd of December, on which he hoped to salvage the whole process after it had failed and collapsed at Camp David, said the Palestinians' state should consist of 100% of the Gaza Strip, 94-96% of the West Bank, and for the 4 to 6% the Palestinians were supposed to cede of the West Bank, they were to receive compensation from Israel, from Israeli territory. In other words, Israel, in, in, in exchange for the 4 to 6 percent Israel was going to get of the West Bank, according to the Clinton proposals, they were going to give the Palestinians a, a more or less equal amount of territory from the northern or the northwestern corner of the Negev, for example. In other words, Israel would give territory in exchange for the territory that it was demanding from the Palestinians. Now, what was the 4 to 6 percent that Clinton agreed that Israel should retain once it withdrew from the West Bank and once the West Bank became the core of the Palestinian state? It was the 4 to 6 percent in which most of the major Israeli settlements existed. In other words, Israel would withdraw all its settlements from the rest of the territory, from the 94 to 96 percent it was going to evacuate, but would leave the, the 4 to 6 percent in its possession and perhaps move the settlers who were being evacuated into the 4 to 6 percent it was retaining. That was the idea. So the, most of the settlements would vanish, but still the settlers would have this toehold in the West Bank, which was this, a land the Palestinians would, would be conceding to Israel in exchange for land they would get somewhere else from Israel. This was the basis, territorial basis, of the Clinton deal. The Clinton deal also related to Jerusalem. And it said that Jerusalem uh, should be divided ethnically. In other words, Arabs should be sovereign in Arab areas, and Jews should be sovereign in Jewish areas. And uh, in other words, all the, the, the East Jerusalem districts, which were Arab, would be under Arab sovereignty. And all the Jewish districts, the new Jewish districts, which had been planted around Jerusalem, also around East Jerusalem, they would remain in some way under Israeli sovereignty. Uh, but it would be divided ethnically, the city, uh, in terms of sovereignty. Now, the core problem was the old city. <coughs> the old city, <coughs> according to Clinton, sorry, was to be divided more or less in half, in which the Christian and um, uh, Muslim quarters were to be under Palestinian sovereignty, and the Jewish quarter and the Armenian quarter were to be under Israeli sovereignty. This was the division. And then we come to the core of the core of the issue, which is the Temple Mount, which sits in the southeastern uh, corner of the old city. Now, the Temple Mount, as most of us uh, know or believe, is the site, and this is what most archaeologists also believe, is the site of the Jewish temples, uh, the Solomonic Temple, the uh, Second Temple, the Herodian Temple, um, um, is the site of these temples, which were destroyed by Babylonians, Romans, and so on. And the Jews, of course, retained um, as their most holy site the one of the walls, the western wall, or the section of the western wall, which remained standing uh, as their holiest site, what is called the Wailing Wall, or the western wall. So what 
Clinton said about the Temple Mount is this. The Temple Mount has these two mosques on top, Al-Aqsa and um, um, the Mosque of Omar, the Dome of the Rock, some people call it. Uh, and these are holy sites, uh, sacred sites to the Muslims. They should retain these sites and sovereignty over the sites. They should retain sovereignty over, if you like, the surface area of the Temple Mount, which has the two um, uh, mosques on top. The Jews should, should have sovereignty over the interior of the Temple Mount, in other words, the area below the surface, where presumably remain, uh, are the remains, the relics, of the two destroyed temples. In other words, the Jews would be sovereign over the remains of their holy temples, and the Arabs would be sovereign over the two mosques which for them are sacred. This was the proposal Clinton made in regard to the Temple Mount. Arafat said no. And now there are people who dispute in Palestinian ranks who dispute this no. They say, we didn't really say no. But they do say no. They did say no. And uh, they took 10 or 12 days. Uh, uh, Clinton said, you have to answer, you have to respond to these proposals and accept their principle, even if you want to quibble about some small points. These, po these proposals, that's what Clinton said in the proposals, are take it or leave it. The principles must be accepted and within 48 hours by each side. The Palestinians delayed their answer for two weeks and then said no. Or if you like, they said, yes, these are interesting proposals, but we have 200 reservations, which amounted to disputing the principles of what was offered, not just the details, but the principles. And in, in his memoirs, Clinton and Dennis Ross, in his memoirs, both of them say the Palestinians said no. As I say today, there are Palestinian spokesmen who dispute this and say, we didn't really say no, or we didn't really mean no. But the, the, the basic answer was a no, and this is how it was understood by the Americans, all the Americans involved. The Israeli cabinet said yes, they weren't happy, but the Israeli cabinet said yes within 48 hours.